Hello, hello. Blartanian here with the annular equinox fights, uh, the non-annularity ones. You see, uh, one of my viewers asked that I share my clears for these fights because, you know, they're actually, they can be kind of tricky, even though not all of them are Lufania Plus. So I figured, here we go, we'll just run through all of them real quick, three times speed, just kind of real fast, and I'll uh, give you the lowdown on what they're doing, um, if you're still struggling with them. If you're not, uh, and there's a decent chance you may have already gotten through it, I'm going to try to speak kind of more generally about kind of, you know, how I approach the game, team building, fights, things like that, and just kind of try to provide some value for you in case you're uh, not really looking for how to beat these fights. Um, either way. So we got here a team of... Oh, well, of course, before we get into that, be sure to hit that like button, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, leave a comment down below, ring that notification bell, and um, sit back to enjoy. We got ourselves here a team of Golbez, Lena, and Kled. Reason being, uh, Kled takes the orb. Golbez is kind of handy here because they're pretty HP attack heavy. So his BT effect is great for that. They're also squishy, so he doesn't need to, you know... It's not like uh, I have to worry about the effect running out before the fight's done. It's going to be pretty easy there. And they're naturally dark weak, even though they're in peril immune. So he gets to hit that delicious weakness damage without having to worry about maintaining any sort of imperil. Um, the orb, of course, is actually probably one of the trickier parts of this fight. Uh, being a fairly tight spend HP orb, or, or lose lose HP, basically, either through self or enemy effects. We're attacking here because the other threat of this fight is their gaze recast, which we, we've known about since they first debuted in that story chapter. Um, basically, just don't get broken and it's not that bad. We're spamming meteors like crazy thanks to Kled. Pretty awesome. But I guess the thing with this fight I'd want you to pick up on is to learn for a fight and respect the enemy's threat points. Um, the ways in which the enemy can threaten you. Because not every attack, not every enemy turn, not every mechanic is going to be threatening. Some are just kind of filler. Some are just kind of a part of it that isn't like a massive concern. In, these case, in the case of these guys... There are three things that can kill you. One's the orb, respect the orb. Two is the recast. And three is, you know, the, the flamethrower attack can blow you up if you bring a squishy team. So just something to respect. But just keep that in mind and work around it. Um, that being said, this is, again, a really squishy fight, so you, most modern teams are going to be able to blow it up pretty easily. You see here, this Golbez BT phase is going to annihilate them, and it's going to be awesome because we got meteors, we got snake dragons, we got big armor dudes and capes. It's just a great BT phase. Um... But anyway, I guess suppose that's kind of the thing with this fight I'd want you to keep in mind and to take away for other fights, is understanding how to identify and respect the enemy's threat points so you can work around them. At the end of the day, you're just going to be trying to, you're trying to throw out damage to kill the enemy and not die in the process, so just understand the key points you need to not die, in this case respect the recast in the orb, and you're golden. Now, on to the next fight. We got here these Needle Snakes, and we're taking a team of Ace, Setzer, and Prompto. This was probably the most involved clear I did. Um, with all the non-annularity fights, I tried to do a non-friend unit run, and this is probably the trickiest of them. I actually, in my original clear of this fight, just brought Machina and blew them up because I was like, this looks bullshit, and it's certainly interesting. Because the thing with these Needle Snakes, as you probably were aware, was from Boss Rush, their mechanic was this, uh, one of their mechanics is that if they have more than four debuffs, or more than three, four or more debuffs, at the various HP thresholds, 80, 50, 30, they do their shed thing, but instead of doing shed, they do shed plus and cleanse and get a stat boost and sucks. So what I wanted to do here was time it so that they didn't have four debuffs when you hit those thresholds. The thing is, the orb requires you to have four debuffs, so it's an interesting tension there. Many teams just have to eat the reductions and just be like, I guess I have to reapply my debuffs and like deal more damage. But if you bring Ace or someone with short duration debuffs, uh, Setzer's Freeze could do it if you're if you're thoughtful. You can time it so that you don't have to do a Shed Plus, and that's awesome. See here, we're using AAs to just kind of count down some of these card flips, because the next threshold is 50, and that's going to come up on us pretty quick, because this team actually brings a surprising amount of damage given the ages of the units involved. I mean, you know, Prompto isn't actually that new. Or, er, old? He's not that old. He got a C90 recently, but... You know, Setzer and Acer, not super new. That's it, I mean, you know, Setzer's a cheat code, and Ace is one of the more absurd units we've ever received. Um, 
So that's, I guess, the, the key thing with this fight is timing. Specifically, timing of debuffs. Because you see here, we're approaching... We have 10% to go. And we're chewing through them pretty hard. So we want to count down this, uh, this last card thing before we hit 50 in order to avoid Shed Plus. And full disclosure, I mean, this isn't a full Lufania Plus fight, and... There's a very good chance that we could still beat them if they did Shed Plus, but it's kind of a convenience thing and a perfectionist thing. Almost a, a teaching thing, if you will. So you see here we're one last AA to... So that this way, when we go ahead and hit him with the old Piercer, refresh that stack, the card goes off and they're down to three again. So again, it's all about timing. And that's kind of the name of the game with this fight, is understanding timing. Um, or just bringing a team that blows them up. I mean, if you bring a super duper of high power team that just blows them up, it's not, the reductions aren't that that high. Oh, the other thing you'll notice is I haven't used Setzer's Freeze because when they do their spine thingy, um, if they're frozen, then they don't, or if their Brave is frozen, then they don't immediately unfreeze. I'm actually going to showcase that here. You saw the first time they did their spine thingy, um, we quickly, quickly, quickly uh, got them out of that because Prompto had his instant breaks, Ace has his off-turn damage, Setzer's Rainbows. We chewed through those and they kept unbreaking and then getting rebroken and it was awesome. I froze them now so you can see here immediately broken but they don't unbreak and that's kind of annoying because this means that the HP poison stays in effect. So I'm actually bringing Strago here so I can get a quick rebreak. There we go. And now they're uh, down to one so we don't have to worry about it. And that's that. But uh, yeah, I guess that's the thing I would advise you here is be mindful of timing and um, Think about whether you'd prefer to use the freeze or like some kind of alternate method to get around the whole spiny thing, because we have a couple of different ways to do it, and I think they're both they're both valid. You know, if you want to freeze them so I don't gain the brave, that works. As long as you can heal past the HP poison. If you'd rather just, you know, as you see there, we oh yeah, you see there I mistimed it. They finally got the shed plus off. We're still gonna kill the hell out of them because Setzer's on the team. I mean, look at that. There's still a good damage. Um, but you saw the cleanse happen there, so that's, you know, something. We have to reapply our debuffs so that the orb doesn't kill us, and we went to the ace burst phase. Um, there we go. Let's just, uh, we'll, we'll kill him once again with that burst. I mean, it, again, not Lufania Plus. It's not that big a deal. Kind of fun burst. I haven't actually gotten a whole lot chance, a whole lot of chances to play around with it, because I've only recently obtained this, uh, this burst, which is uh, one I've had my eye on for a while, ever since I realized how much fun ace is to play. Now, sadly, this means we probably won't be getting that sweet post-burst trap effect thing that he does, but uh, we'll just have to live with that. Ba boom, ba boom. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, he spined again. I miscounted. Well, counting never was my strong suit, but anyway. So we can go ahead and actually overkill real quick to get an instant break. And as luck would have it, since they've gone, you know, they're not frozen, we can quickly get these guys. Uh... <laughs> Funny thing, though, if you break them with the summon, they don't regain their brave immediately, so that's kind of annoying. Um, anywho. Well, this fight is basically in the bag. Uh, but you, you, I guess, hopefully, if you're paying attention, you kind of saw what, what was going on here and how we uh, how we worked it out. If you don't have Ace, I'm sure there are other, plenty of other ways to clear this. I just found Ace to be the path of least resistance that didn't involve, you know, using, like, Green Machina to blow them up. Anywho. On to the next fight. We're, uh, we're getting through these at a, at a quick clip. A tidy clip? I don't know, a hair clip? Uh, I forget what the saying is. Luckily, uh, if you're still with me by this point, you probably are accustomed to this kind of inane banter that I uh, go on. Um, so with the uh, the Elbnarsh Beetles, the Aloof Horn, as they call them, uh, the orb is interesting because it's Brave Regen, I think, or something. Or so I've heard. I haven't seen it, personally because this guy is actually quite easy to no-turn with the right setup. He's immune to delay until his little ads are dead, which is funny, because it, which is a mechanic he had in his original fight, and it's kind of a funny one because I don't know if you're around for it, but uh, if you lightning was still very popular at that time, and so the idea was you just killed the ads really quickly and then lightning delayed it to death, and that was great. You could probably still do that here if you wanted to. I mean, lightning kind of is eh, not the greatest anymore, but that's okay. I'm choosing instead to bring Noel and Kistis. Along with Sarah for auras, you know, just with auras. Um, so just we just have a bunch of debuffs on him. We're just gonna be kind of delaying and rebreaking him. And if he never gets a turn, then the orb never shows up, and you don't have to worry about it. That's probably for the best because that recast is actually pretty nasty, as I understand it. Um, keep in mind this was the Eldnarsh boss, and Eldnarsh's whole deal is don't not don't letting not letting the enemy do anything. So you have to imagine 
that the boss designed to showcase Eldnarsh is going to do some nasty stuff if you let it act. So, just taking advantage of that null burst that I uh, actually kind of lucked into at one of my previous pulls. I haven't really, I hadn't built him, so just give him a chance to shine. So, uh, the thing about null, well, not null in general, but uh, so okay, the thought process thing here. I, as soon as I used his EX the first time in this fight, I then immediately went into burst. Thought process there was that his burst when he gets out of it, immediately refreshes his EX. I thought about using his LD before going into the burst to get a free skill to make his burst phase better, but I decided I'd rather have a quicker... Like, I'd rather refresh his burst quicker than have a better burst phase through having a free skill to use on another attack. Does that make sense? I hope you followed that. Um, kind of a minor decision point, but there's not much to say in this fight. This is basically just, be, just kill, 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 kill. I uh, get greedy here. I decide, you know what? I want to take advantage of this burst that's up by increasing our brave our HP cap even more with the summon. So we go into the summon. This does technically eat some of the turns and delays we've achieved because if you summon when there's a big window, like window before the enemy's next turn, um, the summon kind of eats some of them, and that's just something to keep in mind when you're trying to no turn something. Uh, that being said, if you're no turning something like this, it may not matter because you may just continue pushing them back and killing them. So it's it's all good. I'm just letting you know that for your own kind of uh, thought thinking about with fights like these when to summon I did it for the damage window but you could choose to use it as a way to get extra space if you wait until you're closer to the boss turn uh, other thing to keep in mind is AAs now are pretty important uh, well maybe not important but uh, a lot more powerful than they used to be so with Noel, I actually made a mistake there well no I did make a mistake I wanted to use the X that wasn't a mistake um, before I had gone into the burst I set up I used the C65 and you'll notice, once I'm done doing burst stuff, because right now I'm going to use his AA again, because you'll notice a significant difference between his damage with or without the burst. Because what it does is it increases the you know, limit for his brave damage, and since we're capping this whole time, the more damage his brave hits are doing, the easier it is to hit the maximum HP damage, because Null doesn't have refunds. For a character like, I don't know, Tifa or whatever, it's not as important because they're just going to battery back at the full anyway, so it's more about HP cap than brave cap. But for a character like Noel, where if you're not bringing like an Ur uh, like a Ursula or a, uh, a Roha or something like that to increase his uh, ability to hit that top cap, that's the thinking. So you'll see here, I ended with the LD, even though it wasn't a free skill, because my thinking here is, okay, his, on his next turn, because of how his burst effect works, he's going to have his EX up. So this way, I can use a free skill first to reapply his AA, so watch this. Launch you, nice. Big damage, big damage. Not a millionaire, but whatever. We're not we're not talking about million damage type stuff right now. Um, meanwhile, you know, the the ads are at zero brave because we I think we max brave down them between Keistus and the Fran base call, which we saved for them to re re reappear so that we can do this. We want them at zero brave because this way, you'll see they just if they get turns, they're not going to damage us because I didn't bring a healer on this team. More basic stuff, stuff you don't really need to care about or think about, but, you know, zero damage, zero damage, there we go, cool. Um, delay, 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 Keistus doing Keistus things. Keistus is actually quite solid if you build a team around her in the sense that you bring, like, a really strong damage dealer to complement the fact that she's a zero turning the boss. Uh, her own damage sucks, and her aura's oh, not the greatest, but I thought I, I would, didn't, I've gotten more use out of her than I thought I would, and that's great. There we go. So, there we have it. Uh, I should probably collect the treasures on Null's summon boards at some point. Whatever. Hoarding is a disease. On to the the, uh, the last fight. This Count Steams. This is an interesting one. I like what they were doing here. Uh, in a lot of ways. I mean, I didn't like that the Count Steams are here because Count Steams suck and we hate them. We we're opening with the Kurosame to enchant Gallop before, since he's going before Kuja. So I'm actually bringing a couple different pieces here that you can use to get through this fight. Uh, you, of course, when the orb appears, are going to need to deal weakness. Holy damage which means, you know, we have Kuja here, enchanting. That's cool. Uh, they also, once you hit the, the usual thresholds, you know, I think 80 and 50 are the only times they do it, they frame their turns, become debuff immune until they use Multi-Slash Plus. Multi-Slash Plus will probably kill a dude if they don't dodge it. It's, you know, guaranteed hit, or not guaranteed hit, and it targets the highest HP person. So Galuf, easy, just kind of cheeses it. It can do it if you, build, if you take off the HP passes of his allies. Um, stuff like that. Prompto probably could do it too. 
they do they are melee resistant which is kind of annoying if you're bringing Galif, but it only really comes up during those immune phases like here the thing the reason i like Galif here as well or eight is because they push their turns back and go debuff immune so hitting weakness holy damage becomes harder they're naturally weak to magic so i guess you could bring a magic team to deal with it but i didn't um you can also last stand your way through these since it hits the highest HP dude, you could just bring two last stands and that'll get you through it. You just need to be careful because they're usually going to follow that attack up with this all HP attack, so you need healing or shielding or something, so we're bringing the wall, the Warrior of Light Call. Um, that's what we're doing for that. Queen going wild here. Having his queen in a little, in a hot second, so that's pretty cool. You missed, idiot. Um, what a stupid goddamn Kraken. Uh, there we go. So yeah, uh, I mean, you know, these guys are always very dangerous. That multi-slash is something to be respected, unless you bring, like, a res character or a dodge character or a last hand character, then you could just kind of laugh at them. The Really, the most dangerous part, we were talking earlier about threat points, there are three things to watch out for. Multi-slash, which you can build around, with a, as I said. The big AoE attack, which you just, I don't know, it, it's just something to bring, like, a, you know, a shield call or a tank or what have you. Um... My first run of this with this team, before I was asked to re-record it, I didn't need the Warrior of Light Call. I got through it without it. I just survived the attack. For some reason, though, when I tried to re-record it... Jesus, resisted. That was a lot of damage. Uh, when I tried to re-record it, I needed the call. So, mileage may vary with what you, with the team you bring. Um, the last thing to watch out for, of course, is the orb, which can count down real fast during that debuff immune phase if you're not careful. Uh... And that's why I brought, I figured off-turn damage would mean that when they went debuff immune, the orb would already be really high because we were hitting them for weakness damage all the, all the time, if that makes sense. So that was my think, thought process there. My think process? My thinking thought process? Jesus, I don't know. Um, this has been a long video, and I've just been trying to keep stuff uh, keep stuff rolling to keep you entertained and amused as we go through it. We're just going to try to chop them down as hard as we can in the summon phase before we go into Kuja's burst to finish the, them off. I have to say, Ultima feels really good to use. I know it's not that impressive a skill. Like, it's only doing 600,000, give or take, 700,000, um, with, like, heavy investment. But it just feels so good, you know? Just like, boom, love it. Damn, queen. Um, all right, into the burst. Let's finish this off. I uh, hope this has been entertaining, informative, something. Uh, again, I... Plenty of viewers out there, I'm sure you've already cleared these, they're kind of old news, but I figured this would be a good service for those of you who haven't, you'll see what I did, see how I was thinking about it. Um, and it beats, I guess, another Edgar Intertwined Wills fight, because that's uh, that fight's a little bit of a pushover. I did just do a Vayne Ash Balthier fight that the run that was pretty fun, so I mean, if you want to see that, let me know in the comments, I guess. I just have been enjoying Final Fantasy XII, you know? <laughs> anyway, that uh, concludes it, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios!